delighted to be joined by Victor Monet. He is a Financial Times Bureau Chief based in Paris. Mr. Monet has an extensive career in journalism, spanning over three decades, I believe, with postings in Europe, the Middle East, Africa, Asia. That's right, yeah. So a wealth of experience to draw on today. Thank um, you. <laughs> you're very welcome to Dublin, and, and we look forward to hearing your views on the future of Europe and indeed the role of France in this debate. I might just start with a broad question. Uh, the new institutions are now in office in, in Brussels, marking the start of the new legislative term. What areas do you think France will look to prioritise over the next five years? I think France, what it, what it really wants to do with Europe, what Macron wants to do with Europe, uh, Emmanuel Macron, the president, is to <coughs> keep um, the European Union sort of very focused on its role as a potential superpower, particularly economic superpower, um, because of the strategic and uh, trade confrontations that it faces uh, particularly with the US and particularly with China. So, so I think that the sort of French vision is of a bloc that is not completely united, obviously, but, but has a sort of very strong common voice on issues, particularly of trade and particularly of strategy, defence and security. And that's kind of everything uh, else that they talk about goes around that, whether it's defence policy or uh, strengthening the, the Eurozone uh, and so on. So all those things sort of go into that vision that Macron has, and he is quite a sort of strategic thinker. He does tend to, to think big thoughts about what he wants Europe to do, and he, he, he came up in 2017, just after he was elected, with a, a very long list of, of sort of common European projects in a whole bunch of areas, including uh, migration, the economy, and defence, and so on. And just touching there on migration, this is something Macron has adopted an increasingly tough stance on. Do you think it's conceivable that he will be able to forge some, some kind of consensus on a common asylum and migration policy over the next five years? I, in, in Europe, in I, think, Europe. I, I think the answer is yes, because it's not only him. I mean, I think you know, all, all the European uh, governments have kind of realised that this is not quite as easy as they thought. You remember Angela Merkel sort of famously invited in a million people from, from Syria and the Middle East, and, and, and basically it turned out to be not... Uh, not something that was going to work that easily. So Macron, on the one hand, you know, he is part of a, uh, a group of liberals, uh, social liberals, if you like, who have sort of come around to the idea that you do actually need to control immigration much more than it's being controlled currently. And France has a particular problem that it is the destination for a lot of asylum seekers. And so it does have quite a large flow of people who are either uh, illegal or haven't yet been granted asylum and may not be granted asylum because they're coming from places where they're not necessarily being, being persecuted. Uh, so there is a kind of domestic political agenda that he has as well, which is that uh, he's competing against the extreme right, the Rassemblement National of Marine Le Pen, and her big thing is immigration and how it should be stopped and controlled. And uh, so Macron is leaning a bit more towards that direction. That doesn't mean he's abandoned all his, his liberal ideas, but he is... Uh, for the last year or so, he has been talking much more about controlling uh, migration. And that translates into his approach to European policy, which is uh, you know, now a little bit more in line than it was with some of, for example, the East European countries. And just to touch there on his approach to European policy, he's been referred to recently as a bit of a disruptor. Can you tell us a little bit about his approach to diplomacy and, and how you think it fits in with the, the traditional consensus-based decision-making in the EU? Yeah, I think uh, he is, you know, he, he is a self-confessed uh, sort of disruptive diplomacy. He talks about audacity or boldness in policy. That's what he does, you know. Uh, so when he makes these quite strong statements about NATO suffering from brain death, it's quite a deliberate policy. And, and what he and his advisors say he's trying to do is to essentially shake up people from their complacency. He says it's hypocritical and uh, uh, foolish just to sort of sit there and pretend that NATO is okay when it's not. So his argument would be, you know, we're being rational. But he definitely has an approach to that that is not always consensual. And he's much criticised, for example, by, by the Germans and by Angela Merkel for not uh, consulting with his allies when he, he goes out on a limb and starts talking to Russia, for example, or, or running a peace uh, initiative in between the Iranians and the Americans. You know, the, the, what the other Europeans want is more consultation. Uh, they don't necessarily disagree with his analysis of the problem. Uh, in the case of NATO, you know, that there, is a, there is obviously a strategic problem when you have 
one of the or two of the countries doing things on their own, Turkey and the US. Uh, what we've got happened in Syria, where Turkey went into Syria and the Americans let them go, and there was no consultation with other NATO members. So, uh, you know, Macron's approach is to be uh, quite forthright about the problems, and his failing, if you look at it from the point of view of uh, the Poles or the Germans, is not to consult enough with his European allies when he says the things that need to be said. So it remains to be seen how successful he's going to be in getting some of his, his key proposals across the line. Uh, yeah, I think that's true. I mean, it is, it is a sort of work in progress, obviously, that the European Union is always, uh, in, in particular, is always, um, is always changing. We have this massive change coming up, probably, which is Brexit, which is going to completely disrupt the way Europe functions, the way its diplomacy and the relations between the big powers in Europe are going to fundamentally change. And France is quite well positioned with, with its sort of people, or, you know, Macron's candidates, if you like, or candidates that he at least approves of at the Commission, uh, in, the, in the European Central Bank, uh, and, and the Council, you know. And he's, he's done quite well in pushing to have people that are sort of France-friendly, if you like, in, in, the, in the Commission and the other institutions of the EU. Well, Victor, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. It's been really fascinating. Thank, thank you. you.